What's up with the gang? It's your boy Josh back with another video, man. Today we got a viral documentary that I've been seeing. Um, he dropped it a day ago. Trap Laura Ross. He got like a million views already. Uh, King Von rap first serial killer. Uh, it's three hours and thirty six minutes. I thought it was just three hours. Oh no! So we gonna be oh, doing no. oh no parts. Oh no! Okay, okay. <laughs> we can do thirty minutes, thirty minutes. Joshua, that's three hours. That's 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 the Malcolm X movie. You can that, watch Titanic. Get on the internet. Nah, it's a long album. That is, we don't gotta do it all today. We can do it each day. <laughs> thirty minutes. We Josh, Josh. That ain't nothing. How for, do you the, for them? They, they, <laughs> 30 minutes. I'm gonna give you my response off camera. Uh, no, sir. If you don't make sure you like, comment, subscribe, follow on Instagram. Give me the 20k on Instagram, 200k on here. Shoot, I'm gonna need a popsicle and snacks to do it. Boy, <laughs> and dinner. <laughs> Shoot. Let's get straight to it, gang. This video is for educational and documentary purposes only. This video is not intending to incite or encourage illegal behavior in any way. Thank Every you. effort has been made to remove any content which violates YouTube's community guidelines. If you'd like to see an uncut version of this video with everything that I can't show you on YouTube, head on over to patreon.com slash Ross. Supporters of the channel also get access to my recent vlogs with Academics and Adam22, as well as my old deleted King Von videos, and supporters on the $5 tier will also have access to my exclusive four-part um, Patreon series where I break down real crimes caught on camera which I could never show you on YouTube. I'm already but tired. if you don't want any of that, just sit back, enjoy the video, and hit that subscribe button. Okay. Ever since the 1980s, gangster rap has been one of hip hop's most hold on, hold on. before before we even get started with this, um I gotta give a shout out to uh <laughs> you know it's it's I, I can't say enough how amazed I am at the people at people who, who will come up to me um, because they've seen something on the channel and how much love they give. I just it's it's so it's so overwhelming and it, it's very appreciated. I just it's it's it blows my mind, man. It's, you know, it just it really does. But I appreciate everybody who does. But I I, I gotta say. Uh, uh, a cat named Therese came up, spoke with him. <clears throat> Name of day, man. So I told you I wanted to make sure we shouted you out. And so I'm doing just that, Therese. Appreciate you, bruh. Uh, appreciate the love, man. And uh, we're going we gonna, to we gonna keep doing what we do for you guys, I think. <laughs> so that's why we reacted to this 30 minutes. <laughs> making subgenres. From the mean streets of gang-infested Los Angeles that were brought to life by early gangster rap pioneers like Ice Cube and N.W.A. to Tupac and Suge Knight taking over the music game. I hate when they say Tupac. It's too, it's Pac, okay? Well, never mind. <laughs> With vivid tales of gang-affiliated rappers who would bully their way into the music industry. And then you have legends like Jay-Z and 50 Cent, whose tales of life in the streets as gangsters made them millionaires hundreds of times over. For decades now, rap fans have been looking for the realist artists, whose lyrics paint the picture of a real life of crime that isn't embellished or fabricated. But when it comes to rappers saying, who truly keep it real, the sh- basically saying cap rap. Huh? Chicago oh. drill scene has dominated for the last decade. First popularized by Chief Keith, the Chicago drill wave was characterized by rappers that grew up in the most dangerous blocks in America. With these up and coming artists rapping plainly and honestly about what they experienced growing up. Shootings on the block, disrespecting. See, it's almost borderline though. Some people get a kick out of observing. Other people, it's like other people become their entertainment uh, because they don't necessarily think, think that it's real or they don't want a real to come close to that lifestyle but they want to watch it it's 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 a morbid curiosity with with negativity and so it's, i don't well i got some other strong opinions i mean i'm constantly being chased by the police chicago drill rappers took gangster rap to raw new heights where the stories behind the music could be matched up with the local news reports on the latest homicides. However, what happens when the people doing the killing start making the music too? Because in the years after Chief Keef popularized the violent stories of Chicago gang life, one of those gangsters killing people in the streets picked up a microphone too and started rapping in the first person from the perspective of the actual killer. So that's King Von had a somebody, reputation in- He had bodies and stuff? Yeah. They say King Von actually had like multiple bodies. 
Oh, that's not cool. Can't go. As a fearless killer before he'd even started rapping. Wow. And it's widely believed, based on the statements he made in his own songs, that Von himself could have killed as many as seven people in his career as a gangbanger. With more murders even taking place after he got rich and famous, with it being rumored that Von used his money and influence from the rap game to have old enemies in Chicago killed. And going on a journey which, in my opinion, takes him far beyond a street player who had to kill to survive in the mean streets of Chicago. Because if King Von's tweets are anything to go by, he simply loved killing people. And the sheer amount of people that King Von allegedly played a role in killing has led to intense speculation as to whether he was a full-blown serial killer. A title which King Von's enemies <laughs> even said that him and his friends took personal pride in. Now, the FBI defines a serial killer as a person who kills over three people with time spans in between them of more than a month. Furthermore, serial killers tend to have an element of psychological gratification which plays a role in the motive for their murders. The FBI also state that a serial killer might seek various kinds of gratification through their killings, such as anger, thrill-seeking, financial gain, or simply for attention. I personally believe that over the course of his career, King Von demonstrated all of these characteristics and can indeed be classified as a serial killer. King Von frequently exhibited behavior in public that conformed with these rules, tweeting regularly about his desire to kill, bragging about having committed specific murders in his music, which attracted him into national attention and billboard charting songs, with his drill anthems about murdering rivals making him a rich man with millions in his bank account. The FBI also point out another characteristic of serial killers, specifically that their victims may all have something in common, for example, a demographic profile, appearance, gender, or race. And it would appear that King Von only killed young black men and women from the community he lived in. These were all people just like him, being born into a rundown part of Chicago and growing up with a lot of disadvantages. All that really separated Von from his victims were the fact that they were from a rival territory and he believed that nobody would miss oh. them. King Von has officially been implicated in oh. rival territory. The Black Disciples of Black Gangster Disciples, Tukaville. Oh. They named that Tukaville? Okay, okay, wow. See, this, this is sad. Um, wow, wow. Okay, I've been years removed from the area, but I grew up in in Racine, Wisconsin, which is like 80 miles north of Chicago. We would drive down there a whole lot. So, it's like gang, the gang life was, it wasn't something that was never, that I was like fully embroiled in, but when it came to like disciples and um, GDs and and just just your different gangs. I wasn't making the connection that they were actually talking about O Block and uh, GDs and everything tied in with with, with everything here. Did, wow. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Josh. God dog. And he believed that nobody would miss them. King Von has officially been implicated in four murders, two where he was suspected of being involved, but the police didn't have enough evidence to charge, and one case where he narrowly received a not guilty verdict after a key witness disappeared and a co-defendant implicated himself. Another that he's accused of organizing with five of his closest childhood friends, the shooting of rival rapper FBG Duck in broad daylight at a busy shopping so district Von will never face justice for well, due to him living. He in charge of it. Like he planned it. Be duck in broad daylight at a busy shopping district. Von will never face justice for due to him losing his life only months before the feds would swoop in and arrest all five of his close friends. This particular murder would go down as one of the most brazen assassinations carried out in Chicago since the days of Al Capone. But in total, there's over 10 murders of which King Von has been connected to over the years. And nobody has looked into all of them in great detail until now. So today, we're going to take a closer look at the man his past and his career to find out once and for all if King Von really was the first serial killer in hip hop history. He was in jail for two murders? Yeah, one murder and two attempts. Four shooters and a hail of bullets. All of them were scared of Von. All of them were scared of Von. Hmm. This is interesting. 
four shooters and a hail of bullets. All of them were scared of bomb. All of them were scared of bomb. Police found several shell casings in this parking lot. King Ball was bloodthirsty. He loved death. He loved killing. Not got a lot of bands. Just very out many, I think. King Von had a insatiable obsession with murder and violence. The shooting leaves one person dead, four others injured. Me? Hey, I know you. Yeah, you know me. I know you. King Von probably would have been considered like a serial killer. They labeled the man a serial killer. Them. King Von, real name Davon Bennett, was born on August the 9th, 1994, in Chicago, Illinois, growing up on West 78th and South Hermitage in an area known as Killer Ward, an area mainly affiliated with the Chicago gangs, the Gangster Disciples, and the Black Peace Stones. Von would attend Barton Elementary School in the area, but despite starting life as a fairly normal kid in Chicago, he would be subjected to the influence of gangbanging in his family home from a young age. His father was Walter E. Bennett, Dang, aka just like his daddy. <laughs> Look, a well-known street dude from nearby Ada Park. Von was mainly raised by his mother, as his father was in and out of jail throughout his childhood. But Von's father was apparently a legend in the streets, with ties to the street gang, the Black Disciples. However, much like Von, despite the fearsome reputation he'd earned in the streets, it would ultimately be this proximity to gang life that would lead to his father's demise, as King Von's dad, Silk, was shot dead when Von was only 11 years old, apparently being targeted by a sniper outside of a skating rink, according to an interview with King mm. Von's uncle. Where's the peace, King Von? Where's the peace, Silk? It's crazy. Like I'm with Big Bro every day. My killer's dead. He was a sniper rifle. Right? This, this get deep though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the, yeah. A sniper. I hit him with a sniper rifle. Right? Yeah, at the skating rink. But you know, that's another story. It seems clear that King Von's father, right, Silk, was remembered as huh? the skating rink. Uh, Cascade, a legend of the block. Cascade However, coping with the loss of his father at such a young age clearly had a negative effect on the mindset of a young King Von. He would tweet and rap in freestyles years later that he simply couldn't sleep after his father's death. They killed my daddy, I couldn't even go to sleep. And throughout his teenage years, he would post RIP tributes to his father on Twitter to commemorate his birthdays. Naturally, Von would follow in his father's footsteps, getting involved in local gang politics at a young age, with Von actually telling 16 shot and visuals in his very first interview that he got involved in the streets in fourth grade, eventually getting his hands wow. on guns by the time he got to high school. And he's like, told the in fourth grade, like, when you it's like, it's like when you that young catching hold to stuff that you have no business catching hold to. It's like, and, and then um, what's crazy is that they, the young people get the guns, the, the drugs, alcohol, all the stuff that they get. They're not getting it from, from their peers per se. They're getting it from, from older folk. And what kills me is that, is that the older folk that give it to them would then turn around and call them the delinquents. And I, I kind of think the fingers being pointed on, you know, in the wrong direction. Eventually getting his hands on guns by the time he got to high school. He was like, told the pipes in fourth grade, like when you started. I was not pop off, I had beating guns or something. I wasn't, it wasn't that heck, like, it ain't get, I just been, you know, in the streets, there's also, I just like being outside. You know, one of the little boys that like sleeping out, just being outside all day, just do a bit of when The gun, all that shit, the, that shit they kind of played to like what? Yeah, like late eighth grade or something. Seven, eight grade when it really got to that point where you gotta hurt somebody or somebody trying to hurt you and you gotta protect yourself. Vaughn would rap on the unreleased song Wait that he jumped off the porch, getting deeply involved in gang politics in 2006 when he was just 12 years old. Vaughn would initially be a member of a local street crew affiliated with the Gangster Disciples called Killer Ward, being seen in numerous group pictures with that crew. And affiliates from the area would later post tweets suggesting that Vaughn was indeed putting in work for this crew during his time gangbanging in Killer Ward, with Vaughn himself corroborating that he was close to the members in Killer Ward where he was born, but making it clear that he's always been a member of the Black Disciples due to his family affiliation. Now, Vaughn would live around Killer Ward up to around 2008 or 9, after which he would eventually moved to the infamous Parkway Gardens housing development. This housing complex is notorious for its affiliations with the Black Disciples street gang. Parkway Gardens would later be referred to by insiders as O-Block, but prior to that, it was referred to sense. as Wick City. And here, sense. King Von would meet many of the people wow. who would end up having a huge influence on his life and career. People famous for their affiliation to O-Block, whether through the gang wars going on there, or through the music that had been made about the gang war. People like Boss Top, Chief Keef, T-Roy, White White, Duke, BJ, Big A, Trey Five, Sheroid, J Money, Platoon, and countless other people that played a big role in Von's life growing up. Von would also attend a new school in the area, 
the Hyde Park Academy, ah. where he would attend with people from other rival territories with affiliations to the Gangster Disciples. People like FBG Duck, who would even claim in a Twitter exchange in 2014 to have plotted to beat King Von up on the school bus, and people like Lil Mark, who Von would even be seen in throwback pictures with before their feud had escalated into something deadly. Von and his friends started out their gangbanging careers with fistfights with the ops at school, schoolyard scuffles that would unfortunately escalate over the coming years, developing into full-blown gang war with firearms involved. Over time, a teenage Von would begin getting more and more involved in Chicago street gang conflicts, apparently bringing guns to school as young as age 13. Chop Squad, who went to school with both Von and G Herbo, would claim that Von would even show off guns in class, with it apparently being Von himself who started the trend of teenage gangbangers in their school bringing guns to class. And Von was the type of person to bring a pole to school at 13 for. Mm. Like, that's what me and Herb was talking about. He was like, Herb was like, he knew it was real when. When Vaughn walked up to him in school, he was like, he had flashed a pole or something. He was like, Curb knew every day from there it was up. He was like, oh, we bringing guns to school? You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, it's on now. Oh, He's like, man. every day from there, he brought, every day from there, everybody brought guns to school. Oh, man. He's like, Vaughn was the one to start that off. In fact, G Herbo would even later rap about this on a collaboration with Vaughn called FaceTime, saying that Vaughn showed him a revolver in freshman orientation, an experience which led G Herbo to begin bringing guns to school himself, too. Now, King Vaughn was apparently out of control as a youngster. According to one story, Vaughn actually did a shooting on prom night whilst wearing his suit after literally tweeting out that somebody better not try him in his suit. So naturally, you can imagine, Von ended up spending a significant amount of time in trouble with the law as a teenager, with large patches wow, of his crazy. most formative years spent inside jail cells. Von went to jail for the first time around August 2010, at age 16, for armed robbery, apparently robbing someone for their car at gunpoint something that he would actually later refer to on his song Armed and Dangerous, saying that he was arrested on August 11th, two days after his 17th Man, birthday, when he was offered 21 to 45 years in a plea deal. Von would end up spending time- There was a partner of mine from, actually, he, he, st <laughs> he still lives in Ray Sane. Uh, we were in Chicago, and we were around one of the places that they talk about on the video, which is why I didn't say nothing, but <laughs> we, we were over there, and <clears throat> messing around, we had stopped at a stoplight, and it was in the evening and when we did uh they ran into the car and was trying to make us get out the car and i told him i said i said well i called his name i said man gun it and he hit it we we we, we ran the uh we went ahead we ran the light and it was popping at us as as we drove off and it was it was at that point i was like this is not it's it's not this not the lifestyle for anybody to be trying to live man, because it, it's ignorant. We weren't we weren't even doing nothing. But the ig man ignorance, I hate it. Camp, an intense military wow. style juvenile program, ultimately rewarding him with early man? release. But soon after that initial charge, Von would catch another in January 2011, ultimately spending 15 months behind bars as a juvenile, being locked up between December 2010 and March 2012. And during this time of incarceration, Von's best friend T-Roy would tweet calling for his release. Eventually, in March 2012, Von would be a free man once again, but he was only free for a matter of months, from March to November 2012. But during this time, Von would undergo a transformation, going from a gun-toting stick-up kid to a full-fledged killer after witnessing the death of one of his close friends, which, as he put it, turned him into a demon. Before we get into the first murders that King Von was allegedly involved in, I just want to take the time to consider the real reasons why he would be motivated to kill in the first place. Despite covering a lot of gangsters who are hardened killers, it's important to consider the social circumstances that need to exist for a teenage boy to start committing murders. Firstly, these areas where King Von grew up in Southside Chicago, Killer Ward, and O Block are incredibly poor and dangerous areas, with the latter even wow. being described by the local Sun Times newspaper as the most dangerous block in Chicago. Part of the reason why so many of these gang murders in Chicago go unsolved is due to the failure of policing in these areas. Yep. Someone like King Von grew up seeing death and destruction All as a completely time. normal thing. And if the police never come to your area to solve crimes or deliver justice, it's easy to see why you would place more trust in street justice than in the state. Furthermore, yep. you now really have to ponder that. whose fault is it really that somewhere like O Block ended up being so poor and dangerous. While it's easy to blame the gangsters and killers there for cultivating a lawless environment, the city and the state politicians ultimately have failed to create the economic circumstances for someone to grow up safely in these areas. Had there been better economic prospects in the hoods of Chicago, perhaps many of these young men wouldn't have been forced into a life of crime and violence. And that's true. The thing about it is that you get, you get communities where people really don't care nothing about and then get upset when even though they're part of the city and they get neglected, 
then when that section of the city starts spilling out into the more suburban you know parts of the city now now it's a problem but it was no problem when, when you know when we're doing it and when folk are doing it to themselves and that's the hypocrisy of the politics that, that's always so frustrating to let folk get 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 lit up and then get mad when it starts turning into theirs too Furthermore, when it comes to the analysis of King Von's eventual transformation into what some have described as a serial killer, there's actually this of King Von's eventual transformation into what some have described. Mm. Furthermore, when it comes to the analysis of King Von's eventual transformation into what some have described as a serial killer, there's actually an argument to be made that geography may have played a part in King Von feeling like he could get away with so many murders. The 70s to the 2000s have actually been described as the golden age of serial murder. And one possible cause for this phenomenon around this period has been cited as urbanization and the concentration of inner city living. Some people have said that putting so many people in such close proximity ends up offering a unique level of anonymity when it comes to committing crimes in these complicated, busy and overpopulated areas. Put simply, this means that in Oblock, the sheer amount of people, overlapping gang conflicts, and normalization of violence on the streets means that somebody like King Von could kill multiple people without attracting too much attention to him personally. As sad as it is to say, in the eyes of the cops, a victim is just another casualty of the gang war rather than a specific crime that could be solved. And it's these circumstances that were the perfect conditions for a young King Von to begin killing people in his community with minimal consequences. And whilst King Von was in jail, gun violence had raged on between the Black Disciples from Wick City and the rival Gangster Disciples from St. Lawrence and Eberhard Avenues, or STLEBT. And during this time whilst King Von was incarcerated, a 15-year-old Gangster Disciple from the rival hood by the name of Tuka was murdered. Real name Shondale Gregory, Tuka was shot dead at a bus stop on the 600 block of East 63rd Street on the 12th of January 2011 at around 6.48 p.m. It was around from that time that a masked gunman jumped out of a vehicle, shooting Tuka several times. Tuka was hated by his rivals from the Black Disciples, and over the next decade, BDs would continue to disrespect him on social media and in popular songs. And in honor of their fallen friend, gangster disciples from St. Lawrence and Eberhardt would rename their area Tukaville. It's never been fully revealed to the public who killed Tuka, but ever since, there has been intense speculation that a boy named O.D. Perry from Wick City might have had something to do with it. This is partly due to him being pictured regularly with a silver revolver, and the witness report from the Tuka murder stated that Tuka was actually shot with a long-barreled silver revolver. Regardless of whether or not OD was really the person who killed Tuka, that didn't really matter, because later that year, on August the 10th, 2011, in an act of retaliation, OD Perry was killed just outside Parkway Gardens. He would suffer multiple gunshot wounds, including one to the neck, at about 11.35 p.m. Just like Tukaville, Wick City was also renamed in the memory of their fallen friend OD, Oblock and it's believed that one of the shooters who killed OD was a female teenage shooter by the name of Jakira Barnes, or K.I. Following the murder, K.I. would begin to pose on social media with a silver revolver, similar to the one that OD was known to carry. And her rumored involvement in this murder of a beloved Oblock member would lead to K.I. becoming a major target herself, with matters not helped by the fact that she would regularly tweet insulting OD Perry and alluding to have having killed him, along with others who would openly claim that K.I. made the O meaning that she killed OD and was the one that caused Wick City to change the name of their block to O-Block. But the tragedies in O-Block were far from over. On the 18th of October 2011, another O-Block native by the name of Patoon, real name Edward Riley, would be shot dead inside O-Block after being approached by two people with firearms. Another devastating loss to the community would come when 19-year-old Sheroid Liggins would be shot in the head and left for dead on February the 16th, 2012, also at O-Block. This murder was particularly Ooh, notable for the, the fact that county. it was believed that Sheroid was killed by a Tukaville shooter by the name of Boss Trell. As the gang war in his neighborhood continued to take more and more of his friends' lives, King Von would get more and more involved, continuing to play a role in the gang war going on in Chicago's street underworld. Von later rapped on the song, Don't Want To Be Me, that everything changed for him in 2012, and that this is when he decided to get more active in the gang war. With Von saying specifically that the deaths of OD and Platoon completely changed his plans and led him to put on a mask and get active in the gang war. Now there's a lot of speculation about the exact murders that Von was allegedly involved in, and we might never know definitively if he was truly involved in all the violence that he was rumored to be associated with, but the very first murder that Von was associated with took place on April the 28th, 2012, when a group of four men would catch a man called King Doc real name Marlon Monroe, shooting him as he walked into a convenience store. With Doc apparently stumbling into a patch of tall weeds after the shooting, 
where he would pass away and lay undiscovered for hours. Doc would eventually be found dead by his 16-year-old cousin, Modell McCambry. Doc would be remembered as an original native of St. Lawrence and Eberhardt Avenues, with his affiliation to the area likely the reason that the killers from O'Block would target see, him, despite the fact that Doc had apparently- is that they're not even, he's not even delving into King Von stuff and all of this death that's already occurred. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Gang life behind him, becoming a painter to get out of the streets. Apparently hurt by the death of his cousin, Modell, that boy who discovered Doc's body, would then begin to get more involved in the gangs in the area too, beginning to hang around with people like K.I. and FBG Duck, as well as being seen on social media with guns. In fact, it's actually around this time that social media begins to play a bigger and bigger role in the gang war in Chicago. And during this time, King Von himself would become a prolific user of Twitter, beginning a flurry of activity on the platform after signing up in June 2012, and going on to tweet constantly about his activities in the streets, seemingly with no fear about incriminating himself. Von would openly claim to be drilling in the name of OD. I can't help it, but it's, it's like it's like when I see stuff like this, it's like for me, I, what my mind goes to is is the roots, and it's like you want to try to try to get to the root of what the issue is in in these cats' minds, and and at the end of the day, uh, I can't I'm, I I can't I don't claim to be that prophetic to know all of that because that's 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 beyond me but i know a lot of stuff is rooted in frustration though and it just it, it's hurtful to see how these young cats feel like this 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 is the direction that they had to go because i remember when you started when you started when we started doing this you showed me a lot of king vine and i fell in love with his his lyrical genius because that that boy could go it's just it's sad man and now he gone behind some stuff that shouldn't happen. <laughs> he would say that he was like Phineas and Ferb in the streets with his best friend and fellow O-Block shooter T-Roy, warning Ops not to diss them, claiming to shoot people like it's nothing. He would tweet that he's been drilling from young and even wants to kill cops too. He would say outright that he will whack people. He would regularly diss <laughs> numerous rival what hoods and all? gangs. Okay, and be okay, like stuff like, well, never mind. This Twitter. Right, I, okay. Tweeting out, so. Claiming to be paranoid due to having so many people trying to kill him. Von claimed on Twitter to get so enraged whenever he hears the name Tuca or St. Lawrence that his trigger finger just starts itching. But during this time that Von was tweeting openly about all the crimes that he was willing to do in the streets, these crimes would continue to play out. On August the 7th, 2012, Von would make a tweet saying that homicide is in the air and that it smells like a graveyard. Then, in the early hours of the morning the following day, on August the 8th, 2012, a group of guys from Oblock, rumored to include Ooh. King Von and T-Roy, would be out looking for enemies to kill. Yep. Dirty Rel, real name Terrell Joshua, an older member with affiliations to St. Lawrence, Eberhardt, and Jaro City, who had actually moved out of Chicago, but was back in town, would end up being shot dead and found on a sidewalk on the first block of East 56th Street in Washington Park you just before 3.30 a.m. However, in this case, retaliation would come fast. As the day of August 8th, 2012 goes by, that same evening, around 11.30 p.m., King Von is out with his close friend White White, real name Tony Dunn. They would go to a convenience store together on East 63rd Street and South Martin Luther King Drive. No. Here, Von would go inside the store whilst White White waited outside. At this point, a gunman pulls up, shooting White White in the back, with a police officer on the scene even returning fire and hitting the shooter who ultimately managed to escape. White White would be pronounced dead in the early hours of the morning on August the 9th, 2012. This date just so happened to be King Von's 18th birthday. This was a devastating incident for Von, who would tweet numerous times about the murder of his friend Whitey, including this one where he said that he had just bought Whitey a pill and gone inside the store, only coming back outside <coughs> by the crowd surrounding his shot friend and at first believing that Whitey would be okay. After this, Von would tweet messages saying that this killing is what led him to act out and in the days following, he would be pledging to kill his enemies publicly. Von later elaborated wow. on his mindset around this period in his song Demon, saying outright that witnessing the death of his close friend Whitey on his 18th birthday is the exact thing that turned him into a demon. And Von would rap that after this, him and his right-hand man T-Roy would be doing hits back to back to avenge this tragic loss. Von would apparently be trying to kill much more ruthlessly after this, desperately wanting to get at rival shooters K.I. and Wooski, who had mocked White White's death on Twitter. In September 2012, King Von and others caught K.I. on the train, apparently beating her up and mocking her. You don't want to do 10 more minutes? No, Josh. So it could be a 30 minute video each All right, Josh. I, I, I don't want to do 30. That's, that's, uh, Josh. All right, come on. I'm saying, because it's a, then look. What did I say initially? 
20, but I'm telling you, I know how this is going to go. Okay, Josh. Watch. I'm telling right. you. It's going to be All a right. series. I, I know how this is going to go, too. I'm telling you. This is going to be our highest view video. Okay. Watch. It. Later in the aftermath, Von would eventually catch up with KI in much more deadly circumstances, but not for a couple of years. For now, he would so continue to gangbang like in the streets with his eye. Yeah, he didn't like it. Okay. KI. Well, I don't think he did. Block brothers like T. Roy, ultimately winding up implicated see, that's, in numerous that, murders yeah, as he continues it's to see. Like, it's almost like now you got to do research to understand <laughs> what the beef and stuff was about so you can appreciate the lyrics. I feel like he's breaking it down good too. Where he is, but it's, 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 it's hurtful and sad all at the same time because you should be able to just watch the video and enjoy the video or listen to music and enjoy the music without having to understand how deep-seated this stuff goes. And it shouldn't even be a subject that you even got to speak or report about. It shouldn't get that, that, that on serious. That's, that's what bothers me. Why? And one body at a time, building up a fearsome reputation as one of O-Block's most ruthless killers. Chicago drill veteran Ty Capone would tell 16 Shot and Visuals in an interview that if you hung around King Von in 2012, you simply had to accept that you would be in shootouts. If you was hanging with Von, you had to accept everything that came with Von. You had to accept that you was going to be in shootings, accept that he, it was going to be that, and you had to be with it, you feel me, with Von. King Von was on a mission in 2012 to get revenge for the friends that he had lost to the gang war. Losing OD, Platoon, and White White turned him into a demon, he said. So he would spend every day in the streets of Chicago stalking his ops and broadcasting his activities on Twitter for the whole world to see. On September the 6th, 2012, Von would get arrested, even taking selfies for Twitter inside of the cop car. He would post pictures of him and his partner in crime, T-Roy, wow. dubbing themselves the O-Block Savages. In fact, after posting one picture together, one woman from O-Block even suggested that Von and T-Roy stop being photographed together in case somebody sends it to the police. Von would tweet how him and T-Roy's names were ringing in the streets and that people were praising them for doing their thing, regularly using this as a catchphrase to refer to his drilling tweeting warnings to the ops that he's about to go on their block and do his thingy thing, telling them that they have two hours to clear the streets and promising to blast them on sight. Von would even reflect on a conversation that he had had with T-Roy, saying that they can't die soon because they know they're going to hell for all the bad things they had done in the streets. Von would even openly tweet about shooting up Dunbar High School around this time. And unsurprisingly, he would continue to be in the eyes of the law, being picked up in October for battery. But little did the police know just how serious Von's crimes were about to get in the coming weeks. On the 13th of October, 2012, Von tweeted that he is about to pop these pills and spaz out on somebody, expressing frustration that he hasn't taken anybody down for a while and saying that he's getting dry, perhaps a tweet with a double meaning that could refer to sex or murder. That very same day, Von yeah. would tweet that his ops party tonight is getting cancelled. Later, Von is tweeting asking for somebody to come and get him. And 30 minutes later, Von tweets simply, ha, huh, followed by 45 Glock me. That very night of October the 13th, 2012, Modell, that same teen who had found the body of his cousin King Doc dead just six months before, would be walking down the street with another one of his cousins on their way to meet a girl. When just before 9.30 p.m., somebody approached them on foot, opening fire. Modell would be shot in the chest and later pronounced dead in hospital. No one was ever charged with this murder or attempted murder, but many years later, police documents would be released revealing that King Von himself was positively identified by a witness as the shooter, with T-Roy apparently at the scene too. This meant that King Von was the prime suspect in the murder. And not only that, but King Von would tweet immediately after the killing. Now, it's important to remember that Twitter timestamps run on universal coordinated time. That's the same as UK time, and that's where I'm reading these tweets from which is six hours ahead of Chicago time. So for me to get the exact time of a tweet that was made by King Von or KI or somebody else in Chicago, I have to take the time that it shows on Twitter and minus six. I'm telling you this because Modell was shot around 9.30 p.m. That means that King Von tweeted, who died? about 17 minutes after the murder of Modell took place. And that tweet was followed by yet another one reading, it's not safe around our way, which came less than an hour after the shooting. And Von's who died tweet would provoke responses from somebody who even knew Modell, with Von saying that the dead person is somebody that they know. In addition to that exchange, the female shooter from Tukerville, KI, would end up getting arrested not long after this for apparently shooting indiscriminately into Oblock hoping to kill anybody in retaliation for Modell. None of this seemed to bother King Von, however, as he clearly got a lot of satisfaction out of having seemingly killed again. The day after the murder of Modell, Von would tweet that him and T-Roy have a problem, 
and that they can't stop doing their thingy thing. Von would tweet that the streets are in trouble when he's coming, and he would brush off the cops' attempts to arrest him. In fact, only two days after the killing, he would get into an argument with a well-known Tukaville GD known as Wooski on Twitter. Wooski had inferred that he had oh, been yeah. at- you remember uh, him? Did we do well, it? Well, I'll tell you after the video argument with a well-known Tukaville GD known as Wooski on Twitter. Wooski had inferred that he had been out looking to catch Von that day, asking him where they were at, with Von leaving a heartless reply saying that he was getting t-shirts made for Modell's funeral. Unsurprisingly, Von would find himself on the radar of the police following the murder of Modell, getting picked up for unlawful possession of a firearm and being questioned in October 2012, with Von later tweeting that the cops grabbed him and warned him to be careful. Apparently the cops even told Von that when they questioned their ops, they all talk about him and T-Roy, suggesting that their names are feared in the streets. Von would even tweet after that that his own mother was beginning to hear the rumors about his violent behavior in the streets and she was trying to put him on punishment. But Von wasn't deterred and he kept using Twitter to increase his reputation as a killer. The following month, Von would be sending unprovoked Twitter ads at Wooski asking if he knew who killed Modell, provoking responses from numerous ops who wanted to see Von dead, including Wooski and KI. And to me, this is where we see King Von really beginning to take pleasure in killing. For years to come, he would tweet mocking Modell, saying it's messed up what happened to him and that he's a straight sucker. It's this sort of behavior where I believe that Von crosses the line from a normal gangbanger killing to survive to a full-blown serial killer who is taking the lives of others systemically for his own personal gratification. At this point, Von has already satisfied the conditions of being a serial killer, having allegedly killed more than three people in different locations with large periods of time in between the killings. And his tweets express a clear tendency to take pleasure in killing and a desire to show the world what he's doing. In a way, King Von's purpose in life at this point in time wasn't just revenge and murder for sport. It was about doing these crimes and giving the world clues about what he had done. And as the story goes on, you'll see King Von constantly hint towards his crimes on social media, in his music, and even on television. But now the pattern had emerged and Von clearly had a thirst for blood. He was becoming a talented shooter and not facing any consequences for these crimes. And so, in the coming months, Von would be rumored to have been connected to at least three more murders, with the police only catching up to him when it was too late. Boy. Well, that's it for part one. Subscribe for part two. We're gonna drop that probably like in two days, or a day, I don't know. Now this getting crazy. As this, so it's just, and see, this, this type of stuff, it almost it almost typifies and is married to the mentality and so it's just, it's hurtful man i just i wish that at some point we could find a way to to bridge the gap remove the frustration push positivity and grow our young man but it is what it is follow the instagram link in the description subscribe for part two rocks 200k I need I need a I need a music video now because my feelings is, is all my feelings hurt. Y'all be saying gang peace. <laughs>